Hey guys, welcome to Bumpy TV. Guys, today we're we'll reacting to the meaning of life in Islam. Guys, for my parents out there, happy Ramadan, and we're going to be doing this for you. So, guys, let's get straight into this. At some point in life, we will all ask the big life questions. Why am I here? Where am I going? What is my purpose? Islam provides clear and concise answers. Allah asks us in the Quran, did you really think that we had created you without any purpose? This video aims to show you the meaning of life from an Islamic perspective. Allah tells us why we are here in a simple but profound verse in the Quran. He says that the only reason we were created was to worship him. See, when we think of worship, we think of praying, but actually, worship in Islam is far deeper than that. Anything we love the most, or obey the most, or rely upon the most, is an act of worship. This means that every single one of us is worshipping something, or someone, at any time. For example, some people love money more than anything that their purpose becomes gathering and collecting as much as they can. This love for money is an act of worship. Some people rely on the approval of others to the point where the number of likes they get on Instagram affects their mood and behaviour. This reliance and dependence on others is an act of worship. And amazingly, this is why Allah says, have you seen the one who takes his own desires as his God? When fulfilling our desires becomes our purpose, we have worshipped our own selves. Arguably, this is the biggest God of today. We live in a time where we do what we want and strive to be who we want. If this was what life was all about, why are the richest people the emptiest? Why are celebrities taking their own lives? Why are so many people still unhappy? The answer can be found in the Quran where Allah tells us that the enjoyment of this life is the enjoyment of delusion. Chasing our desires in the material of this world is a drunk type of enjoyment. True fulfillment comes from directing all acts of worship to the Creator, not creation. Part of directing all acts of worship to the Creator means fulfilling the purpose that He created us for. Like with anything created, the Creator is the one who decides the purpose of His creation. And Allah tells us that He created life and death to test which of us are best in deeds. The test is to see how we live our lives in times of ease and times of difficulty. Will we resort to that which is good? Or will we resort to that which is bad? Since we all perceive what is good and bad differently, we cannot decide the standard, which is why Allah has assured us that the Quran is the standard that clearly distinguishes between what is right and what is wrong. What you'll find is that Islam does in fact cover all bases. It has answers to every life question and leaves nothing out on how we should live our lives. 
The biggest indicator that life is a test is that no one has the perfect life. Allah has created us with different strengths and different weaknesses. Some people may have wealth and beauty, but also be insecure. Some may be intelligent and confident, but also struggle with health problems. In Islam, what we have doesn't matter. What matters is what we do with what we have. How we use our strengths and weaknesses is what makes us superior in the eyes of Allah. It doesn't matter what colour you are, what gender you are, or what status you have. Superiority comes from your piety and your good action. As you can see, just like we have moral obligations, we also have religious ones too. Only until we do both do we fulfil our true purpose. Only until we fulfil our true purpose does Allah fill every heart with what it's searching for, and that is peace. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات طوبى لهم طوبى لهم وحسن مآب Fulfilling our purpose isn't just to find peace and fulfilment in this life, but also to prepare for what's to come after. Without any judgement after we die, there is no justice. Otherwise, what real difference is there between a corrupt leader with money and power, and children literally dying of starvation? This is why Allah asks us if we really think that the evil will be made equal to the righteous. For ultimate justice to be served, there must be something after we die. Which is why Allah promises to bring us back to life where we will all be judged on how we lived our lives. If we were careless, oppressed others, and spread corruption, we will be held accountable. If we took care of ourselves, fulfilled our obligations, and made the world a better place for others, we will be rewarded. No injustice will be done to anyone, and Allah affirms this by telling us that even an atom's weight of good and an atom's weight of bad will be brought to account. Allah then decides our final destination after which there will be no more death. And that is either punishment in hell or perpetual bliss in paradise. Simply just having this belief puts ultimate meaning into our lives. It gives us the best reasons to strive for good whilst also actively avoiding the bad. What better reasons are there than the fulfilment we are all looking for in this life and eternal pleasure in the next. Considering we all make mistakes, isn't the thought of being held accountable for every action worrying? This is where the wisdom and mercy of Allah really shows. Firstly, doing more good deeds wipes out bad deeds, giving us more of a reason to strive to do good and to further fulfil our purpose. This has a knock-on effect and makes the world an even better place for everyone else. Secondly, 
even the prick of a thorn removes bad deeds, meaning any mental or physical pain we go through benefits us on the day of judgment. Again, this allows us to find solace and comfort in the most difficult of times. Thirdly, why not just ask for Allah's forgiveness? قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله A religion is a set of rules and beliefs that you live your life by. If you don't want to be constrained by religion, you will be constrained by something else. Whether it be the rules you create for yourself, or the rules that your friends, your culture, or your society has imposed on you. Considering Allah has told us that he has perfected the religion of Islam for humanity, do we really think that any other rules we follow are going to be more fulfilling, more liberating than those provided by the Creator? Of course, the next question is, how can we be so sure that Islam is from the Creator? I could start by explaining the rational and intellectual foundations of Islam. I could then show you a plethora of reasons why the Qur'an cannot be man-made. I could speak to you about Islamic history and the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But since this video is about the meaning of life, I'll take a different approach. Out of the millions of explanations out there for the meaning of life, can you think of just one that is more fulfilling, more complete than the one that Islam provides? Islam doesn't just give the best incentives to make the most out of life, but it also creates an environment for humanity as a whole to thrive. Islam frees us from the worship of that which has no benefit, and directs us to Allah, the maximally perfect and the only being worthy of our worship. Islam teaches us that it doesn't matter who has the best mix of strengths and weaknesses, what matters is how we use them and how we cope with them. Life being a test instantly explains why we go through difficult times and makes them much easier to manage as these times have wisdom and purpose. Death becomes something to look forward to and not something to be afraid of. And the meaning of life in Islam applies to every single human in the exact same way, no matter who you are or where you're from. Islam is simple, universal, natural, and it just makes sense. So even if Islam wasn't the truth, it would still be the best, most fulfilling way of life to adopt. For that, it is safe to say that being a Muslim means you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Yes, guys, so don't with this video, guys. And I kind of will say, I think I said it in my former video that it's what he said here is very, very similar to the Bible. Yes, I'll have to say that because almost everything he said, I already knew. Not because I watched this before, but I think because it was written in the Bible. And recently I'm reading the Bible very well, and I say most of these things are written in the book of Proverbs. And kind of, I like the fact that it's similar. And when you think of it, like, it's, it's really, really close. But I like the fact that he was able to explain it. Like, he was able to explain it very, very well, guys. And I feel you following Islam religion, like, you following Islam to the core. Like, there's no way you won't make Jannah because Jesus said you can enter the kingdom of God by following the sixth commandment or by believing in me. So, it's still the same thing. Like, guys, 
Tell me if I'm wrong or right, but I think it's the same thing. Guys, see what you think about the video, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel. Happy Ramadan, guys. I'll see you next time, guys.